Well, we've been talking about how to graph quadratic equations, and in the previous video, we looked at how to do it if it was already in its vertex form. More than likely, we encounter quadratic equations, though, that are in this general form right here, ax squared plus bx plus c. And you can tell by the way that this is written that we don't know what it is. It's not in a vertex form, and therefore I can't identify the vertex uh, given the way it's written. So what do you do? Well, we have a vertex formula. The vertex formula is going to take the a and the b out of the equation, and it's going to help us write the x and the y coordinate, and then we can identify the vertex and go on with graphing the equation like we did in the previous, um, the previous lesson. So let's start by looking at this equation right here. This is a quadratic equation, and again, the steps are going to be similar except, uh, except for the part where we're de dealing with the vertex. So we want to identify whether or not this function opens up or down by looking at the leading coefficient. You can see here that the leading coefficient is positive 2, so we know that this thing opens up. Now, now is the part where we're going to have to determine what the vertex is based on the formula. So I'm going to scroll up here. You can see what the vertex formula tells us. It says that the x-coordinate comes from the formula negative b over 2a. So let's go ahead and we're going to substitute in a negative b over 2a using negative 7 as b. So it's a negative of negative 7 divided by 2 times a, which is a 2 and that's going to give me positive 7 fourths. Now go ahead for our purposes right now and leave this as a reduced improper fraction. Then we need to figure out what the y coordinate is in my function. Now this is written in function notation because what it means is I am going to evaluate my function for x. I just determined that x is 7 fourths. So when I evaluate a function, I go back in and I replace all of the x's with what I found it to be to determine what the value of that function is. So f of 7 fourths equals 2 times that 7 fourths squared minus 7 times 7 fourths minus 4. And I'm going to simplify this and come up with a reduced fraction to give me an exact answer. Now don't fret this because you're using a graphing calculator that will handle the fractions for us. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to enter all of this into my graphing calculator because I want to know what the exact answer is. Um, I want to know what that exact answer is in case that's the answer that's being asked for me on the computer. Okay, so what I've done, I have my calculator screen over here, and ignore my little floaty uh, circle you see because they're separated. Okay, so what I have here is my computer, uh, my calculator screen where I'm um, going to make my calculator do the uh, expansion of this or give me back the simplified version in its fraction form. So I have everything written in here. I have my parent, uh, fractions surrounded by parentheses, and all I need to do is have the calculator you know, evaluate it for me. So I go over here to math. The first button is fraction. We hit enter. So this is telling the calculator to give me back an answer in fraction form. I hit enter again and you can see that the result is negative 81 eighths. So that command gave me the reduced fraction, which is what I want. That's the exact value that I actually wanted. So I'm going to go back to the notes and we'll write that down. So we have negative 81 eighths. What again did we find? We found the exact value of the vertex. The x coordinate is at 7 fourths. The y coordinate is at 80, negative 81 eighths. And this is the, uh, the point on the graph where the, uh, you know, that's the vertex of my point. And I'm going to leave it again in its fraction form if I need to answer it that way on the computer. Now, of course, if you're looking at this in your calculator or on Desmos or whatever other graphing so uh, application you're using, you'll probably look at the decimal value representation. Now, the next thing that I would do in my process here for graphing is I've got to find out what the x and the y intercepts are. Remember that if I want to locate what the x intercepts are in a function, that's when I set the function equal to 0 and solve. 
you've been doing that since you started solving quadratic equations in algebra one that was the whole reason why you did it was to to find out where these x intercepts were well maybe not the whole reason but it's one of the reasons so we're going to take our function which was 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 set it equal to 0 and solve now for this case right here I have a trinomial three terms so I'm going to try to factor this thing and see if I can get it in its factored form when I factor this I'm going to break it up into the two sets of parentheses I know that the second sign here tells me that the sign in my parentheses have to be opposite so I'm going to write that down I also know that this first term here is what breaks up into the first slots. This can only break up into a 2x and an x because 2x times x is the only combination to give me 2x squared. Okay, now I'm looking for the factors of 4 that are going to end up subtracting to give me 7 uh, in combination with what I have. So the factors of 4, I know that uh, factors would be 1 and 4, 2 and 2. So I'm going to try a 1 and a 4 because uh, I know 1 times 4 is 4. Now students don't normally miss this part as far as getting factors of this last number here to come into this uh, into the last position. What students typically miss is the is that middle term right there. So I'm gonna uh, and that middle term comes from the oi from foil. So I'm gonna check my middle term here so that gives that's the outer so this is going to be 8x minus 1 is not a negative 7x it's a positive 7x well because I have the right number but not the right sign I'm gonna leave these all these things the same down here and just switch my signs so that first one becomes positive this one becomes negative now let's check it again this is negative 8x plus 1 and that's the negative 7x I needed. Now that we have this factored like that we apply the zero product property which says I can take each of the factors that are set equal to 0 and set them equal to 0 and solve. So 2x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 4 is equal to 0, and this, most, this leftmost equation, so I'm going to uh, subtract 1 to the right-hand side, divide by 2, and I get x is negative 1 half. That's one place that it crosses the x-axis. The second place is over here when I add 4 at x is equal to 4. So these are the x-intercepts of my function. We'll go back in. Let's find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is always the easiest one. It's my favorite one to find because that's where we let x be equal to 0 in the equation and solve for y. My equation, again, was 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 equals y. So I'm going to replace z x with 0 here. I'm going to replace x with 0 here. And you can see when I do that, that we just get uh, y is equal to a negative 4. So we have these two places where we cross the x-axis. Uh, we have this location right here where we cross the y-axis. We have a vertex up here, and we also know that this graph opens up. So I have everything that I need to be able to graph the function. I have the vertex, I have a y-intercept, and in this particular case, I have two more points to, uh, to put on the graph so I can get a pretty good picture. If, however, I don't have that many points, um, in this case, I have four points that I can graph. If I don't have four points to be able to plot, I would need to use the axis of symmetry that we talked about in the opening video, the axis of symmetry and the y-intercept to get my three points to be able to graph it. Now, I, I know that we can all plug this equation into the graphing calculator, okay, or uh, Desmos or anything, and we can get a picture of it. But this is the process that we need to go through to be able to graph it. Uh, and it kind of gives us an understanding of what the graph is. So I am going to put this now into my graphing calculator. And I'm going to see if I was right in my algebra. 
So here I am at the graphing calculator. I'm going to go to the y equals, and I've already entered the equation that we are uh, that we're graphing. I did change my window, and you can adjust your window if you like as well. But I'm going to graph the function, and you can see it right here. Now, if I want, I, I also want to um, verify that the x-intercepts that are located in my picture, the y-intercept that's here on the graph, and my vertex. I want to verify that all of those things are the same thing as what I calculated. So let's spend just a few minutes doing some calculations here. Starting with the minimum value, right? I have a minimum value of this vertex located here. To find that on my graphing, uh, using my graphing calculator, I'm going to do second trace and there's a minimum option. I'm going to do second trace three. You can see here that my cursor is uh, right there in X. Now what I have to do for the calculator is give a left bound and then I have to do it again and give a right bound. The left bound, what it's referring to is I need to be on the left side of where I think the vertex is. And I am, I'm already there. So I click enter. Now it wants to know where is the right bound. And by the way, you see this little arrow up here? It's telling me that this is the left bound. That's where I chose it, anywhere on the left side. So I'm going to click, and I've got to use the arrow button, and I'm going to move over to the right side of the vertex. OK, it takes a long time on this calculator on my computer to actually move that point from the left to the right, and I didn't want to make you wait. Just so long as I am on the right side of where I think the vertex is, I can stop. I hit enter, and you can see the line over here indicating the right bound. Now it's asking you for a guess. You don't want to make a guess, you want the calculator to tell it to you, so you hit enter one more time. And here it's telling me the minimum value of my uh, quadratic is occurring at 1.75 for the x value and negative 10.125 for the y value. Now we can go back and we can see that uh, that value, that uh, 1.75, if you were to find the decimal value for your vertex that we just calculated, that is in fact the actual vertex that we, that we found. Now another thing we want to look for on our calculator could be the y-intercept. When I'm looking for the y-intercept, um, I can do this, there's, there's many different methods for you to be able to find both the x's and the y-intercepts. I'm going to show you one, one that I kind of use. So I'm going to go over here uh, again to second trace, and I'm going to choose this, uh, this right here, number two for zero. No, I'm not. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to choose value. I'm going to choose value. I think that one's going to work better for me for right now. Um, if I want to know where the y-intercept is, the y-intercept occurs when x is equal to zero. So here, this option only is going to let you input x values and it'll return the y value. So if I enter a zero in, you can see it gave me back that this y-intercept occurred at uh, zero, negative four, which is what we calculated um, algebraically. Now the last thing I want to be able to verify are the x-intercepts. Again, I can, there's multiple ways to do it, but I'm going to go to second trace and I'm going to, I'm going to talk about the zeros. This function right here, the zero option, is talking about the zeros of the function, which are the things that occur here, which are the x-intercepts. Again, it's, it's asking me for my left bound. What I have to do is I have to move my arrow along the um, graph so that it is going to be on the left side of that x-intercept. So again, without making you, so you can see me moving my arrow, without making you wait for that, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Oh, well it was a lot faster than I thought. Let's see if it stops. Yeah, it stopped right there, so I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to be on the left side of where my x-intercept is. Now I have to arrow over to where I'm on the right side of where that x-intercept is. And then you hit enter again. See if it's going to stop for us. 
I was overzealous. There we go. Now it stopped. I'm on the right side. Again, it's asking me for a guess. Nope, that's not going to happen. So you hit enter again, and it gives you back that the zero of the function, which is the x-intercept, it is what we solved for, is occurring at negative 0.5, which is what we said. It is at negative 1 half. Okay, and then you could do the same process again for this x-intercept that's over here. You just would move the arrow over and get it to be on the, um, the left side of your x-intercept arrow again until you're on the right bound or the right side of your intercept. Uh, hit enter and then enter one more time and it'll return that value. So that's how we are going to uh, graph our quadratic when it's in, its gen in the general form.